Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I'll be looking at a really common blues style riff that's great for getting started on bass. It helps with developing the coordination of both hands because we get to cross strings and it's a really simple fretboard shape that makes moving around to different chords and keys really obvious. So this is a really common riff that sounds like this. So I'll just run through the notes first of all. So we're playing it in the key of C. So we begin on a C, third fret of the A string, and we play twice on there, so. Okay, so just third fret of the A string. Then we move up to the octave C, fifth fret of the G string. And again, we play another two notes. So we have. Okay, then we move down to the B flat, third fret of the G string. And again, we play another two notes. And then we move down to the G, fifth fret of the D string, with another two notes. So all together, very slowly. Okay, and then we're back to the beginning. We just play that round and round and round. So take it as slow as you need to go to play it. And, um, you know, don't worry about speeding up at first. Just get it under your fingers. So very, very slowly. And round and round. So that's the basic riff. So now let's take a little closer uh, look at the technical side of playing it. Now in the fretting hand, we're using the index finger and the pinky, or fingers one and four. Whenever we number the fingers for bass playing, we generally see them as one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we're only using the first and fourth fingers here. So I'm playing the C there with that index finger, the first finger, and then when I move up to the octave, I'm playing with the fourth finger, the pinky. And that gives us a nice clean position there, not much stretching going on, it's just a nice octave pattern, okay? So, and that's a very, very uh, popular way of holding the hand for an octave. Okay, so we've got the first finger, then the fourth finger, and then when we come down to the B flat, I'm playing with the first finger again, the index finger, and then when I come down to the, the G there on the D string, I'm playing with the fourth finger again. So I'm only using <laughs> the first and fourth fingers. Okay, now, if you're, if you're just starting out on bass, you might find that that fourth finger, or pinky, is a little bit weak, okay? So it might be a little bit hard to, uh, to play like that. Now, I would still advise you to keep trying to play it like that because it'll build up the strength in that finger. But, if you wanna get it under your fingers a little quicker and you know, it's, you're just getting nowhere with that finger, you can play it with the third finger. So when you go for the octave, you could play with that third finger, the ring finger. And some of you might be holding the hand like this. Whoops. You know, I would advise you to not hold your hand in that position, you know, coming across the bass. Try and keep the hand a little bit parallel, or well, the fingers a little bit more parallel with the frets. So that you've got the thumb in the back of the neck here, you've not got it right over here, just thumb in the back, and then the fingers there, parallel with the frets. It might mean rotating the hand around a little bit more and bringing that elbow, tucking that in a little bit more, but that's a much, much cleaner technique. So you'll, you'll probably find it a lot, lot easier like that as well. And that'll certainly help when you're trying to play it with this fourth finger, okay? Because if you're all scrunched up like this, that fourth finger, you know, it's, it's just a little bit tougher to, uh, to play with it. But there you see, I'm just playing with that fourth finger. If I was playing with the third finger, Okay, now I, I mean, I find it much, much easier to play with that fourth finger when I'm in this position. So, you know, try putting that thumb in the back, get those fingers parallel with the frets, and it'll probably help a lot. Now let's have a look at the picking hand. Now for this riff, all I'm doing is using a very strict alternating motion, okay? I'm just going between fingers two and one, okay? So the middle finger, index finger. So I'm starting on that middle finger, and then playing the index, so two, one. Then I shift up to that octave, two, one. Then down to that B flat, two, one. And then down to the G, two, one. Okay, so each time, just two, one, like that. 
Now that can be quite tricky when you're first starting out, you know, trying to keep that alternating motion. Eventually it'll just become automatic. You won't even be thinking about it. But when you very first start out, you might start playing with one finger and then maybe trying the second finger, the first finger, then moving with the first finger. You know, it's all, it's all a bit of a mess. But eventually, if you get used to playing alternating like that, it'll help a lot with, you know, as you, as you progress. So always try to keep that 2-1 motion. Start slow and just, you know, look at each note of it one at a time. So think C, 2, 1. Then think about moving, 2, 1. Then moving, 2, 1. When you very first start playing a riff like this, and, you know, if you're a beginner, it you, you'll be concentrating on one hand more than the other. You know, you'll be looking at the notes and really trying to get the notes right. You won't be wanting to really concentrate on this hand. So, you know, get this hand down first, the fretting hand, get the notes under your fingers. But then once you've got that, because it's a very simple riff, you know, there's not many, not many notes to play, you'll get that under your fingers quite quickly. Then start thinking about this hand, you know, and then you, you won't have to worry about that hand. Just start concentrating and focusing on two, one, 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 two, one. Okay. In terms of the thumb placement, you could keep it anchored on the pickup. You know, some people like to do that. I don't really advise that, you know, all the time because, you know, you have to use this thumb to mute the strings to keep a lot of that noise out of the way. But, you know, if it's first starting out, you could put it there. Or you could keep the thumb on the E string because we're not playing the E string, so... That keeps us a little bit closer to the action. But once you've got, got it all under your fingers, you've got used to that alternating picking, I would say try shifting the thumb when we move across, okay? So when you play the C, you could play it with the thumb there on the E string. Then when you move across, try and shift the thumb onto the A string. And then you can play all the rest of them with the thumb anchored there. Then when we move back, to the, uh, to the C, that is, on the A string, you can just bring the thumb back onto the E string. Now, I know this will seem a little bit tough to begin with, and you might be thinking, well, why do I need to do that? But it is good practice at moving across the strings. Eventually, as you... You're going to start wanting to move around the neck a little bit more, and when you do, you're going to have to start moving that thumb, because, like I say, that's the key to keeping all that horrible noise coming, uh, residual sounds from all these lower strings. So we need to get used to moving that uh, that thumb around and this is a really good way of getting used to it so so like i say you could keep the thumb there but then now one thing to bear in mind if if you are trying to do that try to get used to bringing the thumb out after the c and then bringing it in as you come down with that second finger for the for the octave so it's kind of like this motion. I'm, I'm exaggerating the move there, but see how I'm bringing that hand out and then bringing them both down together like that. So the thumb's coming in. So, and then you keep the thumb there. And then eventually when you come back down, we just slip the thumb back here. Okay. Again, I'm bringing the thumb out and then dropping it down onto the string as I go to pick that uh, that starting note. But like I say, don't worry too much about that for now. That's, you know, that's a little bit more advanced in terms of your technique. I've just given you a few things there you can work on. You can keep it anchored, you know, to begin with, but then gradually, as you get better, try making that shift with the thumb. So once you have the riff under your fingers, you can start to move it around a little bit. So to begin with, let's just move it to, up to D. So we're just going to move the whole thing up two frets so we can see that pattern and see that shape and how it moves. So if we look at the original riff, okay, we're going to take that finger pattern there, that little box shape we've got, and we're just going to shift the whole thing up, just shift that finger pattern up two frets. So we're going to be starting on the D. So that's fifth fret of the A string. So I'll just run through the notes very quickly. So we've got D, fifth fret of the A string. Then we move up to the octave D there at the uh, seventh fret of the G string. Then we move down to the C, fifth fret of the G string. And then we move down to the A at the seventh fret of the D string. You can hear there, it's the same riff, just transposed up a whole step. So 
take note of how it's exactly the same pattern there, exactly the same shape, almost like a little picture there on the fretboard. Same fingers that I'm using, first and fourth finger. You've got this little leap across up two frets and then across two strings for the octave. And then we come down two frets and then up another two frets onto the next string. You know, it's, it's just a little picture that you can see that you move around. And that's really, really important for learning a lot of stuff on fretted instruments like this. You can just see these little patterns. Now, obviously, you need to learn the notes as well. You don't want to just uh, rely completely on patterns. But when you're getting started, it can help a lot with uh, speeding up the process. So that's in D. So now try going between the two. twice on each. Okay, so you can move that pattern anywhere on the neck. So you just want to get used to moving it around into different places. So move it up a, you know, a fret at a time. Start on the E string. Just get used to seeing that pattern. And um, now I'm just going to work through a little chord progression just applying that movement okay so first of all here's the uh, here's the actual riff okay so i'm not going to run through every single note in there I just want you to work that out by yourself, okay? So as a clue, <laughs> we begin on a C, then we move to an F, and then we go to a G. So it's twice on the C, once on the F, once on the G. And if you don't know those notes, we've got C, third fret of the A string, F, first fret of the E string, and G, third fret of the E string. So really, all you've got to do is take that riff, and then just move it around. So like I say, I'm not going to just, I'm not going to run through every single note. I just want you to work that out as homework. If you're a bass beginner and you want some more beginner's lessons, just check out TalkingBass.net. There's a link in the info below. If you want a step-by-step -step introduction to bass guitar, definitely check out the Beginner Bass course. It's an eight-lesson course taking you from the basics of holding the instrument through tuning and much, much more. From there, you can move on to the Basic Fundamentals course, which is a huge course covering every aspect of bass playing, from technique, through bass setup, gear, effects, reading music, everything, okay? So that's it for today. I have a lesson every Friday, so uh, look out for that and I'll see you later.